this is. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Carla, Neven, I hope I said your name right, uh, Jessica and Luke for um, this conference. I, um, I'm extremely grateful for the invitation from Shadan, um, but thank you so much for organizing this. We really uh, appreciate this gesture. Um, and for me, I am who I am fundamentally because people have loved me. And so for me, one of the people who's very been instrumental to my growth over the last couple of years has been Dr. Bailey, our mentor. So I can't be where I am without, you know, acknowledging his influence on me. So Dr. Bailey, y'all, uh, yes, yes. And I would be remiss if I missed out my academic auntie, Dr. Wilkinson. Yeah, thank you so much for coming to be here. Um, and for me, it's always a pleasure when I can get to sit around two of my favorite budding intellectuals. Um, I'm really scared. I don't even know where to go with this. Um, um, so, so in light of, of the discourse thus far, um, I think it's interesting if we think, for example, Adam had said, um, you know, whiteness is something that is invisible, juxtaposed to black suffering and black death that is visible. Right? So when we think about contemporary America, we can think of the death of Trayvon Martin as something that is a spectacle in society, right? The emergency of suffering in a post-9-11 world. Um, and I was laughing when you were evoking Fanon with, you know, the amputation of the black male, right? Um, Langston Hughes in Black Misery has this little skit where he's talking about this kid who goes to class, and one of the teachers asks him, who was the founding father of the nation, right? And he says, Booker T. Washington, all right? Um, and it's funny, right? But it, it gets to this point of if we take seriously any connotation of multiculturalism, right, how do we begin to see black male sexual reproduction? as instrumental to the founding of a nation, right? And so I want to interrogate what 9-11 means for us, right? Most of us coming in into this intellectual discourse around things called post-colonialism, post-modernity, but for most of us growing up age, what does it mean that 9-11 is something that is uh, very much a liberty, right? We live through 9-11, right? Um, but what does that mean to be post-9-11, right? Mm -hmm. And what type of nation do we live in? Right? And do nation states do exist? Right? So even when we think about America, um, the black nationalists, very rightfully so, would say Africans in America are colonialist subjects. Right? It's a nation within a nation. But we also have to think about indigenous people. Right? What nation do they constitute? Right? Where do they fall into the discourse about nationality? And I think the interesting thing here is um, Kanye West um, quotes from Gil Scott Heron's piece, um, Who Will Survive America? Right? Who will survive America? 9-11 signals an interesting point in America's history. Because again, if we think about post-9-11, what type of nation state emerges in America? Right? Are we saying uh, citizens no longer have any sort of um, leeway from, from government agencies helping them out? Right? So here we can think of Katrina happens concurrently with 9-11. Right? You juxtapose the everyday people in New Orleans who helped build America, right, are flooded and hit, war and poverty goes on, up against Iraq, right? And so we create two different connotations of blackness, right? So there's this idea of the fearful Arabian person who is a potential weapon of mass destruction body, right? Somebody might consume our culture and kill us, right? Up against somebody who is hit in Hurricane Katrina looting, right? So we emerge under this assumption of what blackness is, right? And I think when we think about Kanye talking about suffering, right, who sings America becomes a question, right? What type of nation does America come in a post 9-11, right? If we're so interested, for example, a lot of times we may watch TV, right, you think about when soldiers come back, we all have this captive moment about them returning to America, right? But we never think about the kids in Iraq or Iran or anywhere else where they've lost a parent, right? Imagine what that would be like, right? And so even for us, as we grieve for for parents of, of Jordan Davis, right, of a Trayvon Martin, right? What America emerges from that, right? The blues tradition of saying, how do we keep social death at bay, right? How do we push up against the systems of domination, right? And so when I think about Kanye West, I think about if we do live in a 9 11 world, right, the backdrop of that says we're a post civil rights generation, right? Affirmative action comes in, these policies that says, yes, you black boys and brown girls all should go to colleges, right? But what happens when I enter into these spaces where fundamentally there's nothing going on in here, right? There is nothing that is speaking to my existence, right? And I think that's what's interesting when you think about a college dropout, right? Because again, if you think about the Black Panthers as an organization that comes in from Oakland, happening right on the college campuses that push up against these systems of Eurocentric domination and ideas 
of what it means to be a student, right? Kanye re reappropriates that, right? And I always think Kanye's interesting because if Malcolm X's idea of America is a nightmare, mm -hmm. for Kanye, America is a surrealist environment. All right? It's something that is melting about America, right? And we might deodorize that with perfumes and all these things, right? So even his access into the fashion industry, right? Is yeah, but I want you to know that blackness is still a part of this, all right? So yeah, you can rock the label, but fundamentally, the black experience has always shaped the nation as we know it, right? And how do we keep that tradition alive, right? So in light of that, um, I wanted to think about um, this idea of what uh, Eva Marie Garuko's radical indigenism, and she's talking about um, that if we think about Native Americans, right, we've come under this assumption that, well, not even Native Americans, but indigenous people, we have these assumptions about who they are in a dominant culture, right? And radical is really just a Latin word for root, right? How do you get to the root of something, right? And she says, how do we get to the root about these assumptions about people, right? And so again, in a capitalist system, right, there are particular dominant ideologies about blackness, right? And for Kanye to sort of use a Stuart Hall analogy, right, he says, capitalism is not always relational, right? There are always ideological discourses that go on, right? So for most of us, this is perfect, right? We go to Starbucks, right? What's your favorite Starbucks drink? Anybody? Somebody? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, see? So Starbucks create its own language, right? They come in with a particular idea. So when you walk in, you already know what's going on, right? But also, what happens to the people in Kenya, for example, with their own language about the crops they're growing, right? That language of labor that goes in, right? Juxtaposed against the barista who works there from nine to five, or however long, right? up against the working class people who come in on their own shifts, right? So you have this multi-discourse going on through a transaction that's one-on-one, -on -one, right? And Kanye is saying, yeah, so when we think about community, how do we think about these voices that are not included in a market system, all right? So if you go to something like College Dropout, the first skit going on between him and Benny Mark is, if Benny Mark plays a professor who says, I want you to sing a song for these kids that graduate, right? And Kanye says, yeah, I've got the perfect song for you, all right? And then he says, what? Drug dealing just to get by. Right? And it's like, what the hell's going on? All right? But fundamentally, again, that's what Kanye's saying, right? We have this ideation of, let's be celebrating America. But Kanye's saying, no. How can we celebrate America when young people don't have access to this? Right? How do we interrogate that? Right? I can't dissociate my Chicago background. Right? It's maybe who I am. It doesn't have to be dualistic. It has to be federalistic. Right? But this is what it means for me to be in this space. Right? So if I'll be true to both the Eurocentric idea of the learnedness, right, I also have to live it. Right? My blackness is always with me. Right? And so Kanye is always forcing us again to interrogate multiple ways that conversation is going to end. Right? And so even when you think about, I always find it funny, and this is maybe an anti-feminist thing I shouldn't be saying. Hey, I might get lynched. Um, <laughs> but um, the workout plan is an interesting song, right? Because again, when you think about it, um, our relation to youth culture is interesting, right? We always assume young people are always consuming, right? But there's also a component of, like, young people come in from working cultures, right? You have parents who are working in there, right? Or sometimes it's just mom, right, or dad, right? How do you compound the fact that if you come in from a single household like you did with the mother, right? His mother's making 70 cents less on the dollar than an average other person in the same profession, right? What type of desires happen in that household that is different from somebody with a two-parent household and they sort of negotiate what goes on around this, this is how you can have access to this, right? Kanye interrogates that to say, well, what happens with these young people in these environments, one, who have to work a hard time, right? And then we create an American dream for them, but we want them to consume without giving them access to jobs, to wages that are sustainable, right? And I, so, so I, think, I think it's interesting in this light of, Kanye to me is almost evocative of a Malcolm X, and this is a strong leap, um, but I think Malcolm X made an interesting point when he was talking about the slave, right? And so again, Hegel's idea of the slave and master is sort of like there's a slave and a master and there's always relation. And Paulo Ferreira almost has the same thing, the pedagogy of the oppressed, right? He says, only the oppressed can free the oppressors, right? But Malcolm to me is very interesting because it says, nah, Hegel and, and Ferreira, there are two slaves in America, right? There's fundamentally the slave who's in the household and there's a field maker. Right? The film Negro rejects any assumption of sort of the alienation of the double consciousness, right? For Malcolm, excuse me, for Malcolm, the house Negro is the one that's really sort of um, 
going through the devil consciousness, right? Because he makes this joke about, you know, when the master is sick, we're sick too, right? So there's this sort of association of when the master is sick, I am sick too, right? It's so Hegelian, right? So, you, so your idea of who you are is always up against the mimicry, right? But Kanye rejects that, right? He wants to be the house Negro, almost like a Malcolm X, right? So Malcolm West has the whole nation standing at attention, right? I will be the motherfucker who say, burn the house down, right? I will bring it down, and so I'll stand up and Taylor Swift, right? I will be that person who reminds you blackness is always a potent thing in America, right? So again, for Kanye, to me, his relation is always to say, any ideation of how we think about America must always go up against these voices that are not allowed to come into the spaces, right? And poetry, if we go to what Vico says, poetry is always a eulogy of death, right? We begin with those who are dead, right? And so even when he's talking about Katrina, right, the very moment to say, how can we as a nation of opulence and perfume and luxury say this is okay, right? But we can spend so much money to go kill somebody who has potential weapons of mass destruction. Right. And so you can think about the idea of sort of like the hijab law that goes on in Europe when they're trying to quarantine these Arabic women from wearing these things up against the Trayvon Martin with the hoodie. Right. So America creates this ideology that sips down to a George Zimmerman around self-defense, just the same way we think about mass weapons of destruction, that we should go into these neighborhoods, terrorize these people. Right. And for Angela Davis, fundamentally, that begins to say, almost like Ida B. Wells, right? America's violence is always juxtaposed with capitalism, right? Such that the black male, if he is part of this nation, must be amputated, right? And Kanye rejects it. So if you want to, don't forget my black balls, right? Because they are fundamental to America. Just not my labor. My sexual labor is also important to America. So let's keep it gully, right? Multiculturalism has to run through that, right? So again, for me, Kanye is, is this figure using a Stuart Hall idea that we should not take lightly that capitalism is always one-to-one -one relation, right? We have to interrogate these different ideological spaces and discourses that allow us to think discursively and more broadly about what it means to exist in, in a context of a post-9-11. All right, thank you. Thank you both for being late, but we wanted to make sure we had